Just as you can't fix a flat tire with a claw hammer, you can't safely navigate VFR with the wrong type of aeronautical chart. Certain tools are better suited for specific jobs, and certain types of VFR aeronautical charts are more suitable for specific types of navigation. The three basic types of aeronautical charts used for VFR flight navigation display similar symbols for airports and many other chart features. The significant differences among the chart types are in the amount of geographic area and detail each displays and how the charts are typically used. The amount of area or detail and how you use the chart are often related. A World Aeronautical Chart, or WAC, covers the most area of the three types. It uses a scale of 1 to 1 million. At this scale, one inch on the chart represents approximately 14 nautical miles or 16 statute miles. A sectional aeronautical chart is next in the amount of area shown. It uses a scale of 1 to 500,000. At this scale, one inch on the chart represents approximately 7 nautical miles, or 8 statute miles. Out of the three chart types, a terminal chart provides the most detail, but the least amount of area. It uses a scale of 1 to 250,000. At this scale, one inch on the chart represents approximately 3.5 nautical miles, or 4 statute miles. WACs are often used by pilots of high-performance airplanes because those aircraft operate at high altitudes and airspeeds. WACs not only reduce the total number of charts the pilot needs, they also reduce the pilot's need to change charts frequently. Sectional charts, or sectionals, are considered by VFR pilots to be good overall navigation charts. They provide enough detail and cover enough area to be useful for most navigation situations in aviation. Terminal charts provide a wealth of detail to VFR pilots who are flying or planning to fly in Class B airspace. Terminal charts show the lateral limits of the various sections of the Class B area on a larger scale than do sectional charts. In addition, they provide a more detailed display of topographical features. Terminal charts are available only for some major U.S. airports. In addition to containing topographical information and airport depictions, sectional charts contain aeronautical information that pertains to navigation and communication facilities, airspace, and obstructions. For example, sectional charts often display a white border around Class B airspace, as shown on this chart. The border indicates the boundaries of an available terminal chart that covers the Class B airspace in detail. On the reverse side of selected terminal charts, you'll find a VFR flyway planning chart, which shows VFR routes for transitioning around, under, and through Class B airspace. The chart coverage area is the same as that for the associated terminal chart. These charts are designed for use in conjunction with terminal charts and sectional charts. However, they are not to be used for navigation. The many depictions on a VFR flyway planning chart include ground references, VFR flyways and altitudes, and IFR arrival and departure routes. All of this information is intended to help you with your flight planning associated with Class B airspace. Ground references on the flyway planning charts will help you plan your flight. Ground references shown in this example are Spencer Mountain and the associated Spencer Mountain Antenna Checkpoint. In addition to ground references, you'll see several types of VFR routes, including VFR flyways, VFR transition routes, and VFR corridors. A legend on the planning chart identifies the symbols that depict the routes. You can fly along a VFR flyway in the vicinity of Class B airspace without actually entering the airspace. Here you see a bi-directional flyway specifying an altitude below 6,000 feet MSL which places you underneath the 6,000-foot MSL floor of Class B airspace. To aid you in situational awareness and help you avoid heavily congested areas, the planning charts depict IFR arrival routes with arrowheads and large aircraft symbols. IFR departure routes are shown as a line of arrowheads 
which indicate the direction of departure. The ATC clearance requirements for VFR flyways, VFR transition routes, and VFR corridors vary in the following ways. An ATC clearance is not required to operate on a VFR flyway. Before entering Class B airspace on a VFR transition route, you must obtain ATC clearance. After receiving a clearance, you must fly the route as depicted on the chart at an ATC assigned altitude. A VFR corridor is airspace with specific vertical and lateral dimensions that allows you to fly through Class B airspace without a clearance from or communication with ATC. These routes are not meant to discourage requests for VFR operations. Instead, they are designed to help you avoid high traffic areas such as IFR arrival and departure routes. In the interest of safety, you should always verify that you are using the most current and appropriate aeronautical charts for navigation and planning. Each VFR aeronautical chart that is approved by the FAA displays an effective date and a date on which the chart will become obsolete for use in navigation. On the front panel of every chart, you'll see the word effective followed by a date, which indicates the beginning of the period in which the chart is current. After the effective date, you'll see the word to followed by a date, which indicates the end of the period in which the chart is current. You should not use the chart for navigation or planning at any time before or after the specified date range. On this particular chart, the effective date range is from January 17, 2010 to July 31, 2010. Be sure to check the front panel of every chart to determine its effective dates before using it. Between chart publishing dates, you can find updates online at the National Aeronautical Charting Office at www.naco.faa.gov. Updates are also available in the Airport Facility Directory in the Aeronautical Chart Bulletin section. You can also consult Notices to Airmen or NOTAMs for chart updates. When you're planning or carrying out a flight, knowing the height of the terrain along the intended route is critical to your safety. VFR aeronautical charts show the terrain elevation information you need in selecting a safe maneuvering or cruising altitude. The ability to interpret contour lines, color tints, and spot elevations on these charts is a fundamental aviation skill. Contour lines are lines on a map that connect points of equal elevation. They are useful in showing the elevation and shapes of the land surface depicted on a chart and are good references for determining the height of the terrain above mean sea level or MSL. This model illustrates the relationship between terrain shape and terrain elevation in reference to the contour lines shown on the chart. When viewed horizontally, the lines are parallel to the base of the mountain and to each other. From a higher angle, you can see that the lines follow the irregularities of the slopes, valleys, and cuts on the mountain. When you view the terrain from directly overhead, the lines represent what you see on the chart, indicating both the elevation and the shape of the mountain. 
The interval or distance between contour lines is defined in the contour legend on the front panel of the chart. Widely spaced contours represent gentle slopes, while closely spaced contours represent steep slopes. Basic contour lines indicate a 500-foot contour interval, as specified in the chart's legend. If the surface terrain is moderately level or gently rolling, the legend might indicate intermediate contour intervals of 250 feet. The legend might contain auxiliary contour intervals of 50, 100, 125, or 150 feet to portray smaller relief features. The color graph on the front panel of VFR aeronautical charts defines the gradient tents that are assigned to various elevations. Colors range from green at sea level to brown at elevations above 12,000 feet MSL. The color tents on each chart are specific to the terrain heights depicted on that chart. For example, this color graph varies from a low of 3,000 feet MSL to a high of 14,433 feet MSL. Spot elevations identify individual points of terrain elevation. The highest terrain elevation within the area depicted on the chart is noted at the top of the color graph. In this example, it's 14,433 feet MSL. The elevation and latitude and longitude coordinates of the highest terrain are grouped in the contour legend on the front panel. Maximum elevation figures, or MEFs, appear on sectional charts in quadrangles, which are rectangular areas bounded by lines of latitude and longitude. MEFs are based on the highest known feature within the quadrangle, including terrain and obstructions. And MEF is typically shown in the center in most quadrangles. The quadrangle dimensions are 30 minutes of latitude by 30 minutes of longitude. Here you see the attention box on the sectional chart. This box describes the meaning of an MEF and provides an example MEF value of 12.5. The larger number, 12, represents thousands of feet. A smaller number, 5, represents hundreds of feet. The example MEF, therefore, indicates an elevation of 12,500 feet MSL. An MEF value of 14,300 feet MSL is specified on this sectional chart. Specialists often adjust MEF values by adding 100 to 300 feet to the original value to account for possible vertical error and obstacle avoidance. In addition, MEF values are usually rounded upward to the next 100-foot level. Because of the variety of airport types, shapes, and sizes throughout the world, sectional charts use a variety of airport symbols to help you picture the airport being depicted. Other symbols provide details regarding runways and airport services. The legend on your aeronautical chart is your tool for deciphering symbols and decoding aeronautical chart information. Airport symbols are color-coded to indicate whether they are served by control towers. Airports that have control towers are indicated by blue symbols. Those with no control tower are indicated by magenta symbols. You can determine the types of runways at an airport by interpreting the symbol that depicts the airport. For example, an open circle indicates that the airport does not have a hard surfaced runway. If an airport has at least one hard surface runway that is 1,500 feet to 8,069 feet in length, the chart symbol displays a runway layout inside a circle. Runway orientation in these symbols reflects the runway's approximate magnetic direction. At airports with at least one hard surface runway that is longer than 8,069 feet, or some multiple runways that are shorter than 8,069 feet, the airport symbols show the outline of the runways to indicate the general layout of the airport. The airport symbols are not enclosed in a circle. 
If you were flying over the airport, you could recognize all hard surface runways by the pattern on the chart symbol. This star indicates that an airport beacon normally operates from sunset to sunrise. Symbols with tick marks extending from the sides indicate that fuel is available at that airport and that the field is attended during normal working hours. Normal working hours are Monday through Friday, 10 a.m. to 4 p.m. local time. A circle with an X superimposed over it represents an abandoned airport with a paved runway at least 3,000 feet long. These airports have landmark value. Keep in mind that you can obtain details about airport lighting, navigation aids, and services by consulting the appropriate airport facility directory. Here are additional airport symbols you might see on aeronautical charts. A refers to a symbol that identifies a seaplane base. Hard-surfaced runways that are closed are still shown to aid in identification. Private airports are designated by the letter R enclosed in an open circle. These airports have landmark value in navigation. Although landing at a private airport requires the owner's permission, you are permitted to use one in an emergency. Military airports have the same appearance as civilian airports and are identified by abbreviations such as AFB, NAS, and AAF. This airport is an Army National Guard base. The airport data printed on an aeronautical chart provides you with valuable information about the depicted airport. Depending on the available services, the type of information the chart displays for an airport varies. However, the symbols and conventions charts use to communicate airport data are similar for each type of VFR chart. You use the airport data legend that is printed on a VFR aeronautical chart to decipher an airport's communication frequencies, the approximate length of the longest runway, the availability of lighting and weather services, and other important data published on the chart. The key at the top of the legend provides a generic airport example with coded data. Explanations of the sample data appear below the key. Learning to match the explanation to the data element takes practice and a trained eye. The first two highlighted sample codes represent a generic airport with a flight service station on the field, and a notation that fixed-wing special visual flight rules or special VFR flight is prohibited. The boxed airport name indicates that special air traffic rules and traffic patterns apply. It's followed by a three-digit location identifier for the airport in parentheses. However, if the airport is outside the contiguous United States, a four-letter International Civil Aviation Organization or ICAO location indicator appears in the parentheses. The next section contains airport data on radar, radio communication frequencies, and control tower operation. The R in the blue circle indicates airport surveillance radar capability. You can refer to the airport facility directory for ATC approach and departure control frequencies. The letters CT indicate a control tower. The tower's primary radio frequency, in this case 118.3, appears next to the letters. A star indicates part-time operation. After the tower closes, you use the Common Traffic Advisory Frequency, or CTAF, noted by the letter C. Circle to monitor and communicate indicates part-time operation. After the tower closes, you use the Common Traffic Advisory Frequency, or CTAF, noted by the letter C in the blue circle, to monitor and communicate appropriate broadcasts on the designated frequency when you are within 10 miles of approaching and departing the airport. CTAF can be a Unicom, a Multicom, an FSS, or a tower frequency. A table on the chart margin provides information about control tower frequencies. With the ATIS or Automatic Terminal Information Service frequency, you can receive current airport information, such as information about surface winds and the active runway. When full-time ATIS is not available, other services might be available. These services can be an Automated Surface Observing System, or ASOS, an Automated Weather Sensor System, or AWSS, 
or an Automated Weather Observation System, or AWOS. The chart indicates which service is available and its associated frequency. Additional airport data appears next. The official airport elevation, highlighted here, is defined as the highest part of usable runway surface measured in feet above mean sea level. In this case, that airport elevation is 897 feet MSL. The letter L indicates that airport lighting is in operation from sunset to sunrise. If an asterisk precedes the L, it indicates that lighting is part-time, on request, or pilot controlled. The number 110 represents the length of the longest runway in hundreds of feet, 11,000 feet in this case, although usable runway length might be less. The Unicom frequency at airports with a control tower, normally 122.95, appears here. Airports that have runways with right traffic patterns are depicted in this example with the letters RP, which indicates that right traffic patterns affect runways 23 and 34. For current airport information, the legend might include VFR Advisory Service. VFR Advisory Service is shown when full-time ATIS is not available and the frequency is other than the primary control tower frequency, which is 125.0 in this case. Additionally, the airport might be designated as an Airport of Entry, or AOE, which provides customs and immigration services for incoming flights. You can find additional information about your destination airport in the appropriate airport facility directory. On VFR aeronautical charts, boxes contain radio aids to navigation, or nav aids, and communication frequencies. These boxes appear near the nav aid symbol. Information published for a nav aid includes the name, frequency, and Morse code identifier. Flight service station, or FSS, frequencies are printed above the nav aid boxes. Because they are normally available at every FSS, the emergency frequency, 121.5 MHz, and the two-way frequency, 122.2 MHz, are not listed on the chart. En route Flight Advisory Service, or EFES, can be obtained by contacting FlightWatch on 122.0 MHz. VHF radio frequencies are colored blue. Low and medium frequency facilities are colored magenta. As an example, here's the symbol for the Fort Dodge Vortac facility. The Vortac frequencies and Morse code identification appear in the nav aid box. A box with a heavy line indicates that an FSS is present at the airport. The FSS frequency is printed on top of the box. A circled H in the top right corner of the box indicates that the Weather Service HIWAS is transmitted over the Vortac frequency of 113.5 MHz. The underlined frequency indicates that there is no live voice transmission capability on this frequency. Only recorded information, such as HIWAS, is available. Aeronautical charts also depict symbols associated with very high frequency omnidirectional range or VOR navigation, such as VORs, Vortex, and VOR DMEs, as well as NDB facilities associated with Automatic Direction Finder or ADF navigation. For example, this circular dot pattern, which you can see around the airport symbol here, represents a non-directional radio beacon, or NDB. When you are communicating with an FSS, you can usually transmit and receive on the same frequency. However, sometimes you use two separate frequencies. In this example, near Chico, you must transmit to Rancho FSS on 122.1 MHz and receive the reply on the VOR DME frequency of 109.8. When the FSS cannot transmit but only receive on a certain frequency, the letter R follows the frequency listing. The controlling flight service station in this area is Rancho FSS. For cross-country planning and flight, you can refer to navigation and communication boxes for information concerning radio aids to navigation or nav aids and flight service stations in the area. You'll communicate with flight service stations en route to open and close flight plans 
obtain current weather information, or for assistance in emergency situations. A transcribed weather broadcast is a weather report transmitted continuously over selected nav aids. Tweed broadcasts usually consist of route-oriented data, including route forecasts, forecast outlook, winds aloft, and other selected weather reports. The information is specific to an area within 50 nautical miles of the FSS or for a 50-mile-wide corridor along a specific route. A Tweed forecast is valid for 12 hours and is updated four times a day. You can use the topographical information symbols on sectional charts to identify the locations of natural and man-made features, such as lakes, rivers, railroads, roads, and highways. These symbols serve as excellent reference points for navigation. You will find it easier to orient yourself in relationship to a landmark if you turn your chart to face the direction in which you are heading. Although ground storage tanks do not extend into the air the way a water tower does, they are marked on charts for navigational reference. Racetracks are easily visible from the air. Typically, you won't find multiple racetracks in the same geographic area, which will help you make a positive identification of the landmark. Familiarize yourself with the other symbols on the legend to become more skilled at associating topographical information on the chart with the landmarks you'll see from the aircraft. In addition to paying close attention to terrain features, you also must be aware of man-made obstructions to flight. Although some structures might extend only several feet above the ground, others might rise more than a thousand feet. Generally, only man-made structures that extend more than 200 feet above ground level are charted. Objects 200 feet or less in height are charted only if they are considered hazardous obstructions, such as those near an airport. Examples of charted features that are considered hazardous obstacles to low-level flight include smokestacks, tanks, factories, lookout towers, and antennas. Obstructions that incorporate high-intensity lights into the structure are noted with this symbol. Some of these obstructions might operate part-time. The elevation of this lighted tower is 6,249 feet MSL, or 1,161 feet AGL. Groups of obstructions are indicated with these symbols, which are similar in appearance to pairs of obstruction symbols placed side by side. The elevation of this group obstruction is below 1,000 feet AGL. Printed next to many obstruction symbols is the MSL elevation of the top of the obstruction. The height of the obstruction above ground level is found on the line below the elevation. In extremely congested areas, the AGL values might be omitted to avoid confusion. When an obstacle is known to be under construction or is reported at the time that the chart is being published, the letters UC appear by the symbol. These letters mean that the position and elevation of the obstruction is unverified and that you should use extra caution when flying in the vicinity of these types of obstructions. A caution box might appear to alert you to an unusual hazard, such as this tethered balloon. This chart depicts a group of obstructions below 1,000 feet AGL near First Flight Airport and the Wright Monument at Kitty Hawk. Reviewing aeronautical charts for obstructions along your intended route is an important part of pre-flight planning. Sectional chart legends include a variety of symbols that depict areas for activities such as parachute jumping, glider operations, and hang glider and ultralight activity. VFR waypoints, isogonic lines, and light symbols are included. For example, this sectional chart excerpt depicts a variety of miscellaneous symbols in the area around San Francisco International Airport. When parachute jumping and glider operations occur in an area in your flight path, practice extra vigilance. You might use Sunall Golf Course as a visual checkpoint to identify your position to ATC. Isogonic lines indicate the degrees of variation that are added to or subtracted from a true course to determine a magnetic course. The chart legend includes symbols to indicate VFR waypoints, 
VFR waypoints are navigation tools that assist you with position awareness when you are navigating visually in aircraft that are equipped with area navigation receivers. Two types of VFR waypoints are depicted on aeronautical charts. One type is a standalone virtual waypoint defined only with latitude and longitude coordinates. The other type is co-located with a visual checkpoint or visual reporting point. The names of standalone VFR waypoints consist of five letters, beginning with the letters VP, and are retrievable from navigation databases. They are not intended to be pronounceable and are not used in ATC communications. The names of VFR waypoints co-located with visual checkpoints appear in parentheses adjacent to the geographic location on the chart. They have pronounceable names based on the visual checkpoint and can be used for ATC communications. Latitude and longitude data for all established VFR waypoints are located in the appropriate regional airport facility directory. Miscellaneous symbols can inform you about areas that require extra caution, providing navigational assistance to your flight. You will continue your exploration of aeronautical chart information and symbols as you examine airspace dimensions and operating requirements in the airspace lesson.
VF, VFR aeronautical charts are essential tools for accurate visual navigation, helping you decipher symbols and decode flight information. In part, they depict airport symbols and airport data, navigation aids and communication symbols, topographic information, and airspace and obstruction symbols along your route. To increase your understanding of aeronautical charts, you explore the following topics in this lesson. Latitude and longitude, projections, types of aeronautical charts, chart terrain and elevation, and chart symbology.